Good evening, I'm David Kramer with Alaska Weather. As always, please visit our website, weather.gov slash Alaska. You can get updates to the forecast or check out any watches, warnings, or advisories that we might have out for your area. You can also call our weather info line, 1-800-472-0391. Get updates to the forecast, so that means as well. And you can email me at the address at the bottom of the screen, david.kramer at noaa.gov. Starting off, we'll take a look at the warnings that we still have out for the area. We did have high wind warnings for all of the Alaska range, but now it's isolated for the eastern part of the Alaska range and for the eastern interior. Specifically for the uh, eastern part of the Alaska range, that's through the areas in and around the passes, and there's going to be gusts up to 60 miles per hour. And that's going to be in effect until 1 a.m. on Tuesday. For the eastern interior, that's specifically along the Alaska Highway from Tanacross and areas west and that is for winds that can gust up to as high as 50 miles per hour, and this one will also be in effect until 1 a.m. on Tuesday. Speaking of the winds that we've had in the Alaska range, we have some reports of some areas, even though some of those warnings are still in effect. 24-hour peak gusts, and this is through 12 p.m. this afternoon. Farewell Lake was the strongest with 105 miles per hour, several areas with 88 miles per hour, and quite a few that were 76 miles per hour or higher, including Delta Junction and Isabel Pass, several places around Fort Greeley and the Parks Highway. For our satellite imagery, we'll take a look at our main low pressure system that is headed towards the Norton Sound area, and you can see quite a bit of cloud cover, implicating quite a bit of rain throughout much of mainland Alaska. We have another area of low pressure south of Kodiak Island, bringing some areas of rain and a lot of cloud cover extending into western portions of the Gulf of Alaska and south central Alaska. Back to our main system, we have cloud cover pushing through much of the northern portions of the state with another low exiting off to the northeast of our area, bringing some rain to the areas. And finally, we'll watch a system approaching from the west, starting to bring rain closer and closer towards the western Aleutian Islands. As we look at our weather for the remainder of the day, we can see that system headed out that way towards the western Aleutians, but being held up a little bit by high pressure and ridging that's extending into the central portions of the Bering Sea. Our main low, however, is out over the Norton Sound area, bringing rain throughout all of the west coast up through the interior and south central Alaska, with areas of fog up along the Arctic coastline. There are some areas of snow in the Brooks Range, and we're going to continue to see this in the Brooks Range, as there are some areas that are potentially going to have rain and snow mix through some of the roads that go through the passes of the Brooks Range. That can, it's going to last into Wednesday, so if you're traveling through those areas, be mindful that there could be a couple inches of slushy snow on the roads. Again, that is specifically for it passes through the Brooks Range and the roads that move through those passes. There will also be some snow in the Alaska Range, but we don't expect that to get into any low-lying areas around South Central Alaska. However, we will see more rain along the North Gulf Coast and to northern locations of the Panhandle. As we move into tonight, our low will have moved up into the North, or the Kotzebue Sound area from the Norton Sound area. We'll see widespread rain throughout all of the state of Alaska, mainland Alaska, and along the North Gulf Coast and central and northern locations of the Panhandle. Up closer towards the Ukiagvik area, we could see a mixture of snow and rain with some colder temperatures up there. However, the rest of the Arctic coastline, a mix of rain and fog, and that's going to extend down the west coast to the St. Lawrence Island area. Our system way out west continuing to push rain closer towards the western Aleutian Islands as we move through the nighttime period. As we move into Tuesday, the frontal system out west is going to push closer towards the western Aleutians, extending rain out closer towards the central Aleutian Islands. However, high pressure will still be dominating out over much of the central portions of the Bering and Aleutians. Our low pressure staying relatively in the same spot in the Kotzebue Sound area, continuing to bring rain throughout mainland Alaska, down through south central, and along the north Gulf Coast to northern and central locations of the Panhandle area. Mixture of rain and fog is still expected along the Arctic coastline that will ride all the way along the Arctic coastline down towards the Point Hope and Kotzebue Sound areas. As we move into Wednesday, we're going to see that low finally pushing off to the east. However, it would still bring quite a bit of rain through much of the mainland part of the state. A little bit lighter down in south central on Wednesday, and then much lighter along the west coast for Wednesday. 
As we look towards the Gulf of Alaska area, we'll still see some rain in the area and northern locations of the Panhandle to include the Yakutat area. High pressure dominating out over the eastern bearing, keep much of the area clear from precipitation. However, our frontal system out west pushing closer towards the central Aleutians, starting to bring rain closer towards the islands. For our temperatures for Tuesday morning, staying out in the Aleutians, temperatures dropping down to the mid 40s. Upper 40s through much of southwest Alaska, extending into the interior as well, and for south central Alaska, especially low lying areas. For the Seward Peninsula area, lower to mid 40s, and up along the Arctic coastline, mid 30s are expected. Down in the Panhandle area, we are expecting temperatures drop to the lower to mid 50s. Tuesday afternoon, temperatures jumping up back into the 60s for the Panhandle and near 70 for southern locations of the Panhandle. Near 60 for south central Alaska and mid to upper 50s for the interior and southwest Alaska. Mid 40s around much of the Seward Peninsula, Nome a little bit warmer, getting up to 50 degrees. And then along the Arctic coastline, we are expecting temperatures to get to the mid to upper 30s. Down in the Aleutian Islands, right around 50 degrees is expected and mid 50s as we get to the Alaska Peninsula. Our Wednesday morning lows staying out in the Aleutians, dropping down to the lower to mid 40s. For the uh, southwestern portions of the state, lower to mid 40s, that's going to extend up and include all of the interior and much of south central Alaska as well. For the Seward Peninsula area, getting to the mid to upper 30s, and then down to right around freezing for the Arctic coastline. Down for the Panhandle area, you're going to see temperatures dropping down to the lower to mid 50s in Yakutat, staying closer towards 50 degrees at 49. Kodiak also dropping down to the mid 40s, 45 degrees expected there. For Wednesday afternoon highs, staying out over in the Panhandle area, temperatures getting up into the lower 60s for northern locations, mid 60s for central locations, and near 70 for the southern locations. For the south central areas, getting up into the upper 50s to right around 60 degrees, mid 50s for much of the interior, upper 40s to lower 50s for the western interior down into southwest Alaska, mid 50s for the Bristol Bay area, up along the Arctic coastline. Upper 30s to lower 40s are expected, and then the Aleutian Islands right around 50 degrees to some lower 50s are also going to be expected. Then for the Seward Peninsula area, mid 40s. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. For aviation, we'll start off with flying weather on Tuesday morning. Out over the Bering Sea, western locations, and many of the places along the Aleutians expecting to see IFR conditions. As we get towards the Bristol Bay area, more MVFR is expected, and becoming IFR as we get by the YK Delta area and up through the Kotzebue Sound area, then extending out over the Brooks Range and Arctic coastline. VFR conditions for eastern locations of the interior getting worse as we get further to the west. And some IFR conditions along the North Gulf Coast that will extend through the Yakutat area and into the northern locations of the Panhandle as well as areas near the Gulf. Let's move into Tuesday afternoon. Uh, the Panhandle will clear a little bit, getting to MVFR conditions throughout the Panhandle as well as along the North Gulf Coast, except for Yakutat, which will still stay down in IFR conditions. Eastern locations of the interior will be VFR, but as we move closer towards the west coast, we're going to see MVFR conditions all along the west coast of the state, with some IFRs again in the Brooks Range and the eastern portions of the Arctic coast. As that second system moves in from the west, we're going to see some IFR conditions out over the western Aleutian Islands, and VFR conditions as we get closer towards the Pribilof Islands. As we move into Wednesday morning, areas of IFR out over the Bering Sea and Aleutian Islands extending further towards the east, getting into more of the central locations, still some IFR conditions further to the east. MVFR expected from Bristol Bay all the way up the west coast of the state, starting to mix with IFRs to get to the Brooks Range and eastern locations of the Arctic coast. Eastern locations of the interior, however, should be VFR throughout Wednesday morning. MVFR conditions along the southern locations of south central Alaska, but IFR conditions throughout all of the Panhandle area. Let's move into Wednesday afternoon, Panhandle, Panhandle going to cl clear up, seeing VFR conditions in southern locations, and VFR conditions in areas further to the north. Much of the western portions of south central also becoming VFR as well as eastern locations of the interior. Some areas of MVFR for the YK Delta area extending up to the Brooks Range and Arctic coastline where we'll also see some IFR conditions. Out over the Bering Sea and Aleutian Islands, going to see IFR conditions extending into the central Aleutians. However, as we get closer towards the Pribilof Islands and eastern Aleutians, still should be primarily VFR. As we move into the passes for Tuesday, Anaktivik Pass, IFR conditions improving to marginal in the afternoon. Adigan Pass starting off IFR, improving to marginal conditions as well. Jumping down to the Alaska, Ranger Lake, Clark, and Merrill will both be MVFR throughout the day on Tuesday, as well as Rainy Pass and Windy Pass. Isabel Pass will start off in VFR, but then improve to VFR in the afternoon. Mintest is expected to be VFR throughout the day on Tuesday. 
as well as tending to pass also expected to be VFR. Portage will start off IFR, especially in areas closest to the east near Prince William Sound, and then improve to MVFR conditions as we move later into Tuesday. Chilkoot and White will both also start off IFR and then improve to marginal conditions in the afternoon. Taking a look at our freezing levels, we have our 2,000 foot freezing level over the Arctic coastline with a surface freezing level out further to the north out over the Arctic Ocean. And then as we look down, we have that 2,000 or the 4,000 foot freezing level dropping down through much of the central portions of the Bering Sea and Aleutian Islands with warmer air out to the west by the Western Aleutians, 8,000 foot freezing level, and some more warm air by the Panhandle area up to as high as 14,000 feet for that freezing level. As you look at our icing, we do have icing from the system moving through mainland Alaska above 3,000 feet to over southwestern portions of the state, above 5,000 feet in locations near the interior, and then above 3,000 feet as we get by the Arctic coastline. For our jet stream, portion of the jet moving in over southern Alaska out of a west to southwest direction, 130 knots over the Alaska Peninsula, 145 knots right over the south central area, dropping down to 135 knots by the border with Canada. We also have a portion of the jet moving in through the uh, central portions of the Bering Sea out of the north, 65 knots expected there, and another northerly component of the jet near the western Aleutians, up to a size 90 knots as we push a little bit further to the west. At 9,000 feet, flow around our low out over the far western Bering Sea out of a southwesterly direction, 50 knots, only around 25 knots by the western Aleutians. Strongest winds at this level are going to be near the Akatet area, 65 knots out of a southwesterly direction, and much of the area through mainland Alaska and the Panhandle will be out of that west to southwest direction. In the 50s, or 40 to 50 range, through much of the southern mainland, can up to around 35, so you get to the Arctic coastline. 3,000 feet, 60 knots out of a southwesterly direction out of the western bearing, 45 knots by the western Aleutians. Strongest winds to the state over southwest Alaska, 45 knots out of a southwesterly direction, 25 knots out of the west for the Panhandle area, and up along the Arctic coastline, easterly winds up to a size 35 knots by Point Hope. For turbulence out through much of mainland Alaska, and especially southern and interior locations, below 4,000 feet for southwest, sit below 6,000 feet for the interior, below 6,000 feet for northern portions of the Panhandle, and below 3,000 feet for the western Aleutians. You guys got everything tied down back there? Yeah. Yep. We're going through the lee of uh, St. Elias, so there might be some turbulence. Fasten seatbelt sign on. Well. Who am I to tell you what to do? There are tens of thousands of glaciers in Alaska, some stunning cliffhangers, others wide glaciers that come down to meet the ocean tides. Some, like this one we flew over in August, are easily visible from low Earth orbit and are mesmerizing from a thousand feet above and have trees growing on top of their soil-laden boundaries. Those glaciers, although they represent only a fraction of the world's ice, are contributing much more than their share to sea level rise. Chris Larson and his colleagues have repeatedly measured 220 of them in a small single-engine otter, measuring their height with lasers and their depth with radar, and watching them change from season to season and year to year. But Alaskan glaciers are also different. We're only just figuring out how they all behave. Data from flights like these, part of NASA's Operation Icebridge, can help fill the gaps. Chris and radar specialist Martine Trufer are both from the University of Alaska Fairbanks and both seasoned Alaskan pilots. But they rely on their good friend and legendary bush pilot Paul Kloss 
and his 35,000 hours in the cockpit to fly the incredibly demanding flight lines the mission requires. And does it help you guys being pilots too? I would like to think so, but uh, watching Paul fly and seeing what he does, it's kind of like trying to learn quantum mechanics in kindergarten. You know, I, I can fly my airplane around, but just seeing what Paul does in this extremely challenging environment in the mountains while trying to follow a specific flight line at a specific altitude above ground, negotiating winds, topography, um, maybe occasional low-level clouds that you have to get around and just managing all that is, is just several levels above what I could do as a pilot. Well, I think the first time I came here to this park, I was probably four years old with my father. I've been blessed to be able to fly in lots of places in the world, all over the place, actually, uh, almost every continent. I guess I'm always looking for some place that might be better than this, but I haven't found it. <laughs> Paul's plane is about 60 years old and is the first single engine otter ever retrofitted with a 1,000 horsepower engine, which makes takeoffs feel effortless and gives Paul the ability to negotiate wild terrain, which he certainly did during the first two incredible science flights of this campaign. And with sunny skies and relatively calm air, we covered three vastly different pieces of ice. While Paul fueled up the plane, Chris gave us a preview of the day's science and scenery. So it has one of the greatest coastal reliefs anywhere in the world. So it's between the ocean and the summit of Mount St. Elias, which is 18,008 feet high. It's uh, less than 10 miles. There's a stupendous amount of mountain right off the ocean. It's, it's hard to beat it anywhere in the world. Uh, it might be the prettiest for me. It's, it's, uh, it's uh, absolutely stunning. From here in McCarthy, we'll cross one of the bigger precipitation gradients in Alaska, too. Here it's uh, about 10 inches of uh, precipitation a year, and we'll go over to an area where it's uh, on the order of 200 inches per year. So it's from one of the driest parts of Alaska to one of the wettest parts of Alaska in about 45 minutes of flight time. Wow, that's pretty good. That's awesome. You want to do Tyndall next? Sure. There you are. If the winds are calm now, might as well grab it. <laughs> First, we came to the rugged landscape of Icy Bay, which not that long ago wasn't a bay at all. It was filled with ice. Tidewater glaciers in this region can make dramatic advances and retreats as they feed on high rates of snowfall and then retreat as they're melted by warm ocean waters. Like the Tyndall Glacier seen here, most of these glaciers have retreated dramatically over the last hundred years. But nearby Yahtzee Glacier, after years of retreat, is currently the most rapidly advancing glacier in Alaska. Overall though, the Ice Bridge Alaska surveys from the Denali region in the north to the Juneau Ice Field in the southeast have documented pretty substantial thinning of glacial ice. Areas seen here in orange and red show between about 10 and 15 feet of thinning per year. It's a nice waterfall up there from the hanging ice. We very first started profiling this fall. This gravel fan in the one in the valley next to it didn't exist. All yeah, the, I was going to say, this was look deep. at all the good landing spots here. Yeah, there's no place to land here before. No, it was deep water. After covering several of Icy Bay's glaciers, given that it was time for lunch, just like that, we landed in this unforgettable spot. Flying eastward, leaving Icy Bay behind, we came to the mighty Malaspina, one of the Earth's great examples of a Piedmont glacier that spills out like pancake batter onto a broad plain as it approaches the sea. It surges at uneven intervals, creating dramatic patterns on its surface as it distorts the moraines of rock and soil borne along by the glacier. The Malaspina is less dynamic than the Yahtzee and is only melting at about the average rate for Alaska, but that could change quickly. 
it has the potential for being one of the bigger geographic evolutions in Alaska. Certainly, my son will be able to witness some big geography changes there. There's potential for it being connected with the ocean through some narrow lagoons, uh, estuaries, which would take a little bit of coastal erosion, but it's, it's not too hard to imagine that where the Malaspina Glacier is now could become a large bay. The data that Martin's radar provides could reveal how vulnerable the Malaspina is to melting by the nearby ocean. Here we see the radar returns from the surface of the glacier. And here is something that Chris's lasers can't see, the rocky bed of the glacier, giving us both clues as to what's happening under the ice, as well as a measurement of its thickness. Finally, we came to the Yakutat ice field, 300 square miles of absolutely doomed ice perched high in the mountains. Researchers even debate how this ice field came to be at all. Since in its current configuration, it's hard to imagine how it could capture enough snow to form glacial ice. And so, even if the Arctic weren't warming faster than the rest of the planet, this area would be likely to melt within a century or two. But with many other glaciers, it's easier to see the connection between a warming planet and ice loss. Thanks to data from IceBridge and other surveys, we now have a good estimate of the current rate of loss from Alaskan glaciers, 75 gigatons a year. While airborne observations over Alaskan glaciers have provided a rich record of change in the area, those efforts are now augmented by NASA's newest ice measuring tool, ICESat-2. With six laser beams of its own and orbiting the Earth every 90 minutes, the satellite will carry on the record of Alaskan change. For their part, Chris and his team will continue to do their surveys for at least the next two years, helping to validate the ISAT-2 data and make further detailed observations over the stunning glaciers of Alaska. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Welcome back to the marine section. We'll start off with a quick look at our ice edge. Not much change from what we saw yesterday. However, as we look forward in time, some of the westerly winds coming up can cause some more mixing and melting up by the ice edge. Now down to southeastern portions of the state, starting off in the inside waters on Tuesday, we're looking at southerly winds 15 to 20 knots, and then in the southern areas, northerly winds 15 knots are expected. Out over the Gulf waters in the eastern portions, northwest winds 10 to 15 knots, becoming more westerly at 20 knots as we get closer towards Sitka, and then becoming southerly in the northern portions of the Gulf, 15 to 20 knots are expected, with seas up to as high as 11 feet, highest in the northern portions. On Wednesday in the inside waters, southerly winds in northern locations are about 15 knots, becoming northwesterly as we get to southern locations at 15 knots there. Out over eastern portions of the Gulf, northwesterly winds, 20 knots are expected, and then becoming westerly, 15 knots as we get further to the north, seas as high as 8 feet. On Tuesday, out over the south central area, southeasterly winds for the Gulf waters, 10 to 15 knots, 10 knots out of a southeasterly direction in Prince William Sound as well. In Cook Inlet, southerly winds 20 to 25 knots, with seas as high as 8 feet in the northern areas of Cook Inlet, and then southwesterly winds 15 knots west of the Barren Islands. For Wednesday, staying over in the Cook Inlet area, primarily westerly winds, 10 to 15 knots in Cook Inlet as we get further south by the Barren Islands, 25 knots on both sides and the rest of the Gulf waters 15 to 20 knots out of the west and 10 knots out of the west for the Prince William Sound area. For Tuesday for the Alaska Peninsula and Kodiak Island, all areas are seeing southwesterly winds, 10 knots for the Pacific areas, 20 knots through Shelikov Strait, and 15 to 20 knots on the Bering side. Then on Wednesday, becoming more northerly for most locations, 10 knots on the Bering side, 20 knots on the Pacific side and 15 knots around Kodiak Island, but becoming more westerly as we get closer towards Shelikoff Strait. Seas as high as six feet, highest on the Pacific side. For Tuesday for the Aleutian Islands, eastern Aleutians, southwesterly winds 10 knots, southerly winds 15 knots for the central Aleutians, and strongest winds out by the front by the western Aleutian Islands, southerly 35 knots, with seas as high as 12 feet out west. Then on Wednesday, still seeing some stronger winds in west, western areas, but it's starting to push further towards the east. And then we're going to have southerly winds 30 knots by the western Aleutian seas as high as 13 feet. Southeasterly winds for the central and eastern Aleutian islands, 20 to 25 knots by the central Aleutians, and down as low as 10 knots by the eastern Aleutians.
down the west coast of the state. South of Nunavik Island, we're seeing westerly winds 15 to 20 knots. Northwest winds 15 knots by St. Matthew Island. Westerly winds 20 knots on the northern side of Nunavik Island. By St. Lawrence Island, northerly winds 25 knots. And then in Norton Sound area, southerly winds 20 knots are expected. On Wednesday along the west coast, we're seeing west to northwest winds 10 to 15 knots. Stronger as we get by St. Matthew Island, southerly winds 30 knots there. Seas up to as high as 10 feet out by St. Matthew Island. Down by the Pribilof Islands, southwesterly winds 10 knots are expected. Along the Arctic coastline, east and northeast winds 15 to 20 knots, becoming northerly as we get on the west coast of the state around 25 knots there. Seas as high as 8 feet, closest to the western portions of Kotzebue Sound. Then on Wednesday, flow switching to be westerly in most locations, however, by the Beaufort Sea. Easterly winds still in effect 15 knots, becoming west 10 to 20 knots along the remainder of the Arctic coastline, and then 15 to 20 knots along the west coast of the state. Seas up to as high as 5 feet in the northwestern portions of the area. Quick recap for tonight's weather. We have our main low that is pushed from the Norton Sound area into the Kotzebue Sound area tonight. It's going to bring rain throughout much of mainland Alaska down in the north Gulf coastline and northern and central locations of the Panhandle. We're also going to see a mixture of rain and fog along the Arctic coastline down the west coast towards the St. Lawrence Island area. Up by Ukiagvik, it could be cold enough to see a mix of rain and snow. And then in the Brooks Range from tonight through the uh, through Wednesday time frame, we could see a mix of rain and slushy snow in the Brooks Range through the passes and areas that could get down into the roadways through those passes. Could be a couple inches of slushy snow as we move forward in time towards Wednesday. Down in the eastern portions of the Alaska Range and eastern interior, we also have high wind warnings in effect. Winds up to as high as 60 mile per hour gusts, and both of those warnings are going to be in effect until 1 a.m. on Tuesday. Way out west, you have another system moving and bringing some rain towards the western Aleutian Islands. As we look into Tuesday, that rain is going to extend further east towards the central Aleutians. And out over mainland Alaska, our low over the Cutsby Sound area, relatively in the same spot, continuing to bring rain throughout all of mainland Alaska, west coast, down to the north Gulf Coast, and central and northern locations of the Panhandle. Up along the Arctic coastline, we are going to see some areas mixed of rain and fog, with more fog than rain as we get closer towards the Kyogvik area. High pressure holding firm in the central portions of the Barents Sea, extending down into the Aleutian Islands. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go fly. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbormaster before you go boating.